how do you perceive india and indians do you consider indian citizens and the nation as gullible well i don't know about you but it seems that the ukrainian leadership has a wrong notion about india they have been trying hard to win over india's trust both by means of empty threats and by buttering up the same confused and frustrated line of thinking was visible in the flip flop statements of the ukrainian first deputy minister during her india visit speaking on multiple platforms in india she tried to both butter up india as well as lecture india on how the wish guru should act in order to be judged correctly in times to come namaste and welcome to tfi post i'm your host parish gupta let's begin Recently the Ukrainian first deputy minister Ms Emine Zaporova concluded her 3 day visit Zaporova is the first high ranking representative of Kyiv to speak with Indian officials following the start of the Russia Ukraine conflict on February 24 2022 This was her first official visit to India during which she made every possible steps to seek India's help amid ongoing conflict with Russia Terming the meeting as fruitful Ukrainian deputy minister Zaporova posted several tweets from her official Twitter handle In these tweets she updated about the various programs she took part in during her 3 day india visit during this visit ms zaporova met with shri sanjay varma secretary west mea the bilateral meeting touched on issues of mutual interest on the global stage these included areas like economics defense humanitarian aid and global challenges she briefed mr varma on the current ukrainian situation both parties agreed to set a mutually agreeable date for the next round of foreign office consultation This will take place in the future and will be held in Kyiv. The first deputy minister of Ukraine invited Indian businessmen to invest in Ukraine's redevelopment. She suggested that Indian businessmen can find opportunities in the rebuilding of Ukraine's infrastructure. Secretary West Mr Sanjay Varma highlighted that India has given Ukraine medicines, medical equipment and will give Ukraine school buses among other things. On the issue of Indian medical students, the deputy first minister announced that Ukraine will allow Indian medical students to take the unified state qualification exam in India itself. Additionally, Ms Zaporova spoke with Ms Minakshi Lekhi, Minister of State for External Affairs and Culture. They held conversations on a wide range of bilateral and global issues of mutual interest. Ms Lekhi agreed with the Ukrainian request to grant further humanitarian assistance including medication and medical supplies. It was agreed that the next intergovernmental commission between the two nations would take place in India on a mutually agreeable date. Apart from that, Ms Zaporova delivered a letter from President Zelensky written to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Since the start of the Russia Ukraine conflict Ukraine has been exerting pressure and trying to sweet talk India to get its support in her recent visit to the Ukrainian first deputy minister tried to lecture India as well as speak highly of India to gain favor from India accepting the sovereign right of India to have relations with other countries she lectured India to adopt a more pragmatic approach and think about how history will judge India for being on the side of an aggression nation namely Russia she preached that being with Russia is to be on the wrong side of history supporting Russia means that it is to be in the evil visionary picture of the world later she extended a generous and genius proposal thinking that India would fall for such an intellectually lazy argument to quote India she stated that Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky would be happy to address the G20 summit in New Delhi which is to be held in September this year furthermore the Ukrainian first deputy minister also visited the Manohar Parikar Institute of Defense Studies and Analysis she also delivered a talk at the Indian Council on World Affairs speaking at the government funded think tank Indian Council of World Affairs deputy minister Zaporova also humbly demanded India to include Ukrainian representatives in the G20 meetings several geopolitical experts have tried to present this as an interesting proposal they have rationalized it by highlighting the fact that last time during the Bali summit India voted in favor of allowing Zelensky to address the G20 leader summit back during the G20 summit in Bali Indonesia India voted in favor of Ukrainian side despite the strong reservations of the Russian side which voted against that proposal after that proposal zelensky addressed the g20 summit in bali through video conferencing on that line first deputy minister zaporova argued that as a global leader and current chair of the g20 india can play a greater role in bringing peace and thus should invite ukrainian representatives to the g20 meeting she also hoped that indian officials would visit kyiv soon ms zaporova further argued that nsa ajit dobal had traveled to moscow 3 times since the start of the russia ukraine conflict so mr ajit dobal could visit kyiv for a more balanced approach on new delhi's part In addition Ms Zaporova cited Mahatma Gandhi's teachings claiming that Gandhi ji had advocated defending rights 
free of violence. On the issue of Ukraine-India bilateral ties, Ukrainian Deputy Minister remarked that India is witnessing visionary changes and it may take some time for it to build new relations with Ukraine. She added that the ties should be based on a pragmatic and balanced approach. However, she rationalized that now the balls is in India's court to decide. She said, and I quote, I think the suggestion that I brought here is to have a better and deeper relationship with India and it needs reciprocity. We knocked the door, but it is also up to the owner of the house to open the door or not, unquote. While lecturing India for having stronger ties with Russia, the Ukrainian first deputy minister defended having strong ties with Pakistan. As per many credible reports on the request of US, Pakistan has been supplying military weapons to Ukraine amid the ongoing conflict with Russia, which has not gone down well in many sectors. On Ukraine's ties with Pakistan, Ms. Zeporova said, and I quote, The relationship with Pakistan is never directed against the relationship with India. I know there are some sensitivities about military contracts, but let me be very clear that we have had the contracts since the 1990s, unquote. Her endless ranting and pleasantries are not a lone example of confused policy of Ukraine towards India. Some sunny morning comedian turned President Zelensky tried to take the moral high ground and lecture India on what more India should do to really have a balanced and neutral approach on the Ukrainian conflict. In the initial phase of Russia-Ukraine conflict, Ukrainian ambassador tried to sweet talk India, citing references from Mahavarta. Later, its foreign minister Dimitro Kuleva stated that India is buying Ukrainian blood by purchasing Russian crude oil. He demanded that India should give more practical support to Ukraine and condemn Russia's aggression. Not just Ukraine, but its puppeteer, the US and Western nations should understand that now New India works as per its own national interests, which are similar to theirs. And India is on the side of peace, not what the West or Russian bloc wants India to dictate. India's move can neither be coerced nor changed by sweet talks, so they better focus their energies elsewhere or should rather pay heed to India's backdoor negotiations for peace.